so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. I just want to share one basic point. Ephesians chapter 4. You know, in Numbers 11 of Moses, he said, Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put His Spirit upon them. That's what Moses said, saying, I wish that God would have all of His people being prophets and that He would put His Spirit among them. And that's my goal for this church. Not that it's a one-man show, but that everyone in here has the opportunity to learn to preach the Gospel and be a prophet of God. You're in Ephesians chapter 4. Look at verses 11. This is the 411, if you will, of how a church should be ran. He says, And He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He has five offices there. The apostles have passed away. The apostles saw the Lord Jesus Christ. So there are no more apostles today. But then he starts with prophets. How does God work in the world? First of all, with prophets. Second, evangelists. Timothy was an evangelist. He ordained pastors. Third, pastors. Fourth, teachers. We have many teachers in the church. Hey, we have many prophets in this church. Thank God. Yes, we have a pastor for a reason. Now we're going to do it God's way in His order. But he starts with prophets. Right? I am not above anybody. All of you men with the Holy Spirit in you have the power of God to move mountains. I want you to understand there's a reason God put prophets first above pastor. A pastor is a shepherd. That's a minister. That's a servant. I'm here to serve you as we all together as prophets of God through the Holy Spirit go out to preach the Gospel. Amen. Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put His Spirit upon Him. That's what Moses said and that's my prayer for this church. Look at the next verse. He says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. This is the pattern He's given us. Why does God want us to have prophets in the church? To perfect the saints. Why do we need a pastor? To perfect the saints. To help Christians to become more perfect by hearing the Word of God and obeying what it says. To hear it preached and obey it. He says, For the work of the ministry. To complete the work the big task of evangelizing the whole world for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Edify means to build up, to encourage, to strengthen. We're going to build up this congregation. I'm going to charge you to teach God's Word just as I have been charged by you. We're going to do God's will. We're going to do what it says, whatever He says, whether we like it or not. Whether it applies to me or to you, we're going to preach it. We're going to obey it. We're going to strive for perfection together. Go to Matthew chapter 23. I promise to keep it brief. Matthew 28, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even to the end of the world. We've been told to get people saved, to baptize them, and then to teach them everything in the Bible. That's our goal. That's our church mission statement. We're going to get them saved. We're going to baptize them. We're going to show them what God has said. Go to Matthew 23. Again, the number's 11, he says. and, and that. Well, let me read a couple verses there. Moses gathered the 70 elders, and the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him, and took of the Spirit that was upon him, and gave it to the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Why did... God sends 70 elders in Moses' time. Why did Jesus send 70 elders in His time? So they would prophesy and not cease. This is my charge to you. Preach and don't cease. Preach and don't cease. Our church's charge is just that. Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets and the Lord would put His Spirit upon them. Let's preach and not cease. We're going to have opposition, but we're still going to preach and not cease. Don't give up. Just get stronger. Don't just... Throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't stop. Let's get stronger through the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at Matthew 23. My last point here. Verse 31. Matthew 23. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Now this Jesus is preaching a hard saying against those that hate God, against the false prophets. Jesus preached hard things. Look at verse 32. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers. He says you're going to do more than them you're going to do what they did and more. He says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? This is Jesus saying, You're a wicked serpent. You're going to hell. And you can't escape hell. You're already done while you're alive. Man, this is a hard saying. 
people don't know the Jesus of the Bible. He preached hard. He said there are those that we need to be warned about in this world that are already rejected of God, that are already working for the devil. But to us, look at the next verse, final verse. Verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets from Law of Liberty Baptist Church. Look what he says. Behold, wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Hey, those that meet in synagogues want to attack Christians in the end times. This is our charge from God. Preach and don't cease. Would to God that we were all prophets and He put His Spirit upon us. That's my prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank You for this church. Thank You for all the victories You've gotten us through. Thank You for all the miracles You've worked in healing and